But we have major issues in front of us, the city of Fresno. I've known this from my work on the city council. We have infrastructure issues that the past eight years we survived, we got past bankruptcy, we've built up a $20 million reserve, we paid off $36 million in internal loans, we got as low as 695 police officers, we're trying to build up to 800. But what's lost in this shuffle is infrastructure. Now we addressed the water infrastructure a few years ago, and that will put Fresno in the forefront of water for years to come. It'll be immeasurable what we did and how that'll uh, serve the city of Fresno. We have a park system, but we want new parks, we want new trails. The existing parks and trails need $113 million in, in capital expenses. That's not operating cost. We have a convention center that needs about $10 million. We have a baseball stadium that needs about $20 million. We have streets that we spend about three or $4 million a year that we should be spending $15 million a year. So you can imagine what the city of Fresno will look like in 20 or 30 years. We have to find solutions for those kind of problems. We have perpetual high unemployment, perpetual um, high dropout rate, high crime. We're going to change that model in the city of Fresno. And another thing we have, and I've been harping on this for some time, is technological challenges. The nation, the world is changing rapidly. When I was in Washington, D.C. at the mayor's conference, I listened to Bill Ford of the Ford Motor Company, the icon of automobile production in America, tell the mayors of the United States that within five years, the autonomous automobile will be a reality. And you're talking major implications. We're doing like a 25-year general plan, and you're talking about building garages. That may change in five years. We have to be innovative. We have to stay ahead of the curve. If you looked at you know, the brick and mortar five or 10 years ago before the advent of the, really the big push of Amazon and e-commerce, changing the face of everything. I'll give you one little story of my challenges with technology. So on this trip to Washington, I got there early in the morning with my wife, parked in long-term parking, was gone you know, for four or five days. I come back at night, took me 20 minutes to find my car. I find my car, I'm looking out you know, the exit, it says credit only. So I pull up next to the booth and I'm waiting and waiting. I look in the window and there's nobody there. I go, so I get out of my car, I walk to the side, and guess what? There's a, uh, a, a slot where you can put your parking ticket in and you slide a credit card. So technology had passed me by. And I spent $35 on that long-term parking. Had I had Uber drive me, my wife, drop us off and come back, I would have spent about $15. So that's just one small lesson in how technology is changing, and the city of Fresno is going to be at the forefront. But we have solutions for these major problems. My Economic Development Act that I did a year ago was providing the incentives to encourage business. Two weeks ago, the City of Council signed a contract and authorized one with Ulta to bring in up to 1,000 jobs. This is the City of Fresno. I'm flying to Seattle in a few weeks to talk to Amazon about bringing, hopefully, 3,000 jobs to Fresno. And there's more coming. So this is the City of Fresno with tremendous opportunities coming before us on thousands of jobs. And those are the direct jobs, not the indirect or the induced effect. It could be another three or 4,000 jobs. We have the biggest public works project ever in the city's history going on right now. We have high-speed rail that'll create a lot of jobs, maybe a maintenance charge with 1,500 jobs. We have a major remodeling in the community hospital. There are literally thousands and thousands of jobs out there. So our challenge is to find the trained workers, to get one-third of our economy that's perpetually in poverty, to find them the way to take, to, they can rise, they can participate in the American dream. So talking to my partners on the uh, state trustees and Fresno Unified, there's now plans to build a career technical education facility, at least maybe two, that can finally start addressing this need in our community, that not everybody's gonna go on to UC Berkeley and be a biologist. Some people will be sheet metal workers, I mean, medical technicians, drywall, be plumbers making more money than me. We've got to find ways to get our population uh, educated. We also need to find 
innovative ways to raise money because our budget challenges are enormous. And I look at, I want to hire, and I think we need up to 1,000 police officers. That's an additional 200 police officers. That's, you know, $20 million. And I don't do things, I'm the numbers guy. Nothing is done without finding the money. So we have to find innovative ways like I, a couple years ago, I did the Asset Management Act that provided for the city to identify surplus properties, and it had over a thousand surplus properties. In fact, it had properties it didn't even know it had. We did uh, innovative things like put up electronic billboards along just about five or six locations on 41 and 168 that produce $400,000 a year, and that's every year. So as I'm trying to plug in these short-term revenue streams to find ways to fund our core services. I looked at our budget, this budget I've been looking at for seven years, and it's like the light bulb went off. If you look at, over a long time, Fresno was $35 million general fund uh, debt service in 2016. In two years, that drops $2 million. In four years, it drops $4 million. Now, this seems like a long time, but in 13 years, it'll... The $35 million general fund debt service will drop $27 million. So as I find short-term solutions, each one will be plugged into the termination of a bond. We're going to have the money, I think, that's necessary to have this, com this uh, community thrive and to have uh, enough police officers, parks, street repairs, all those things that are essential to a good city. I kind of conclude with the final item that I'm really going to work on and it's been mentioned here, is business-friendly Fresno. Now, this was started a couple years ago, and I think it was partially successful, but they never finished it up. What needs to be done is, one, the software Excel that we have right now is migrating to our, our system. That'll come online first of the year. But the two major challenges are the development code that we did two years ago that for the first time in 50 years we upgraded it, is having issues. We need to find a translation, a transition for smooth uh, growth. And we also need to tackle the number one problem for business-friendly Fresno, and that is culture. The culture at City Hall needs to change. And it's a top to bottom that I guarantee everybody here, before I finish, Fresno will indeed be business-friendly. We also need, it's great to get 1,000 jobs here, 2,000 jobs there, but really the backbone of our country, the backbone of the state of California, 80% of the cities in California have, I'm mean, sorry, 80% of the firms in, in California, United States, have 20 or fewer employees. Small business is the backbone. So I will, to that measure, assign a new position called a concierge within this economic development department with exclusively will navigate new businesses, existing businesses wanting to expand through this maze of bureaucracy, trying to find loans, train personnel, and so, so, et cetera, to promote small business in the city of Fresno, and also look towards promoting a local venture capital fund to provide seed funding for the many, hopefully, successful businesses that come out of Bitwise. So a lot of great things in the city of Fresno, and, and for somebody who's been here eight years, I say this with all sincerity from my heart. I honestly believe our greatest days are in front of us. But to do that, what we have to do in the city of Fresno is we have to engage the entire city. That includes the 93701 with a 30% unemployment rate. It includes 93720 with maybe a 10%. This city must work together and come together. We need to find opportunities for all of our citizens. I promise you from the bottom of my heart, every ounce of my energy and my soul, I will do the best I can to make this a great city. Thank you.